like a mighty fortress is our God like a mighty fortress is our God when enemies surround us rising like a flood they break into pieces Swallowed in dust, sing like a mighty fortress, like a mighty fortress.
give you permission to flood every area of this place every area of our mind every area of our body let's just take a moment let's just give him full permission open yourself up to him you know the Bible actually says in 1 John 5 18 that the enemy cannot touch us <laughs> he's our fortress our shield Church, we've got two souls today that want to be baptized. If you can just stretch your hands this way and just prepare for God to do something great in Charles Jr.'s life. And Philip, Charles, come this way. Charles Jr., I prophesy that as you come out of this water, you'll leave the world behind. It will be the cross before you and the world behind you. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Today he puts on a terrible strength, invoking the Trinity and confessing the three with the faith in the one. As he faces his maker, we put Christ before him, Christ beneath him, Christ above him, Christ within him, Christ to his right, Christ to his left, Christ in every ear that hears him, Christ in every eye that sees him, Christ in every mouth that speaks of him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless you, brother.
Philip Marsh. I prophesy that the world is behind you and the cross is before you. That as you come from this submersion, you leave that behind you in the name of Jesus. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today he puts on a terrible strength, invoking the Trinity, confessing the three with the faith in the one. He puts on the power of heaven, the splendor of the fire, the swiftness of the wind, the fierceness of lightning, the depth of this ocean, the hardness of the earth, and the firmness of rock. Father God, your wisdom to guide him, your shield to protect him, your angels surrounded by him. Thank you, Jesus. Christ before him, Christ beneath him, Christ above, Christ behind, Christ within him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every tongue that speaks of him, let there be Christ in them. Every eye that sees him, let there be Christ, Father God. Every person that hears of him, let it be Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bless you, brother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So anyway, we have a great friend, Brian Welsh. He's with the group Corn, but God's done something really awesome in his life, and his testimony is astounding. And uh, before I share this morning, I ask him to come and share a little bit of a testimony of what God's put in his heart. He's a little wore out, man. It's been an awesome weekend. So we just pray strength over Brian. He's a blessed young man. I don't even know if you're young or not, but you're a man, so come on up. All right, bless you. I'm getting up there. 46. Yeah. Yeah. Tattoos, long hair, that'll keep, keep you looking young. I don't have to dress up nice like, like pastors. I, I just throw on... I wore this yesterday, actually. I usually don't wear the same thing, but like I just got off tour and I forgot to bring more than two shirts. So, uh, but that's okay. Jesus loves me and I'm clean inside. Ah. Yeah. And I got sick right when I got here and I'm like, and I came here for the first time last year and, uh, and I got sick. <laughs> what's, what's with this place? Is it, I don't know. I love it though. I don't care. I don't love it. I got great friends here. I got great new friends and, and, uh, some, some friends that have been here, um, Mary and rich and, and the gang and it's just awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, give it up for the worship, man. This has really been cool. Um, really, really good. And just, I don't know. I, I love when there's talent and anointing mixed together <laughs> and it's not like just anointing <laughs> and you got talent and anointing here. And that's, that's really incredible. But the, this weekend though, there was, um, I mean, just everybody's voice is just on a level. I've been in the music industry for 22 years and just, wow. And, but there was, one of the nights, I think the first night we were here and, uh, you know, everyone's worshiping and I was worshiping. I was on the ground for a little bit and I heard this voice and I looked up and I was like, oh, that's really good. You know, I just felt the anointing really strong. Um, and I looked up and no one, I couldn't find who was singing it. And then, um, and so it happened like three or four times that night and I was enjoying every voice, but there was just, just this voice and, and I couldn't find the person singing. And then we got home and like three or four other people said they, it, it, the same thing happened and they were looking for this person. And I don't know what was going on. If there was, I mean, I believe obviously you guys aren't here unless, unless you didn't believe like supernatural stuff could happen. So let's just leave that at, Hmm. It's things that make you go, Hmm, do what you want, Lord. So yes, I am in a band, a heavy metal band called Corn. I know uh, some people uh, wonder, like, why would you name your band Corn? And we spelled it with a K, backwards R. Uh, when we started, our singer sang a lot about abuse. Um, he was he was abused um, 
uh, I believe sexually and, uh, and just with his, he was bullied a lot by, by peers and he was, he just didn't have a good upbringing. And so when we started the band, he actually started singing about stuff in his childhood and getting bullied and all that. And we, we just, we were in Hollywood, LA, Los Angeles, California. And, and so we just, uh, we got a record deal pretty quick and we started, uh, getting this cult following of broken people, the rejected youth, people that were cast castaways or just like didn't fit in bullied, abused. I mean, so many people were just broken and our singer gave them a voice and gave them something. It was like, they're not, we're not alone. You know, so many people told me that I was going to kill myself. You guys got me through to this day. People tell me you guys got me through so much. And, and it's not like, a God, um, message like, you know, it's, it's like, why did you do this to me? I hate you and stuff like that. And, but it's like, it's getting that, it's getting that, that vomiting out what's inside of there, you know? And so, so yeah, I, I formed the band with them. And I was saying yesterday how, when I was growing up, um, I grew up with a lot of the guys in corn, most of them in, um, and, uh, but when I hit junior high, I got made fun of in my, just the way I was growing up and the way I was looking and I didn't like what I looked like in the mirror. I didn't like myself. I didn't, there was a root of self, self hatred you know, or uh, that, that took root like when I was growing up and, uh, and I, I, I realized that it affected my whole life and whatever I did, you know, in my relationships and, and I just, I've ruined everything because I, 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 felt like I wasn't good enough and I was ugly. And, and, uh, if I let someone too close, they would see my flaws physically and, and inside. And so I carried this through throughout my life. And, but, but I only felt comfortable when I was wasted or, or drinking or doing drugs. And so I, I, I love to be medicated all the time. And, and I, you know, I had a lot of laughter when I was drunk, when I was young, you know, and it worked for a while, you know, sin works for a little bit. And, uh, then, then it starts to turn, turn on you and eat you away. And that's what happened. But I carry that self-hatred in my, when I formed in the band and I was saying last night, it was like, wow, what, like it was, I got everything I wanted, but it was a nightmare because, you know, I wanted to be a rock star, but then they give you all the medication you want from free alcohol to drug dealers showing up, everything. And I'm just like, yeah, this is awesome. In the meanwhile, starts eating my life away, but but and the the whole time I was gaining success in the world, you know, climbing the radio charts, going on TV. Uh, I mentioned last night, got a couple Grammys, couple MTV awards, and just way up in the with the who's who of music, you know, just uh, um, every dream I had came true. But even in my successes, I carried that self hatred and. And I just, uh, at the top, I got even more whacked out of my mind because I was like, now everyone's staring at me, that that ugly duckling, whatever I felt like, you know? And so just drug addiction after drug addiction, after alcoholism, after just horrible heartbreaks, you know? Whether whether it was a, a fight with my wife and and she ended up passed out with a bloody nose because of a fight we got into, or, or it was, um, you know, I woke up from a drug induced thing one night and I, I heard splash, splash. And, uh, I looked out my backyard and my two year old was crawling and she was at the pool splashing and I could have lost my child. I mean, heartbreak after heartbreak. I just, and then the self hatred grew, you know, and I just hated who I become. I hated myself. I hated myself since I was young. I hated myself how I, how I grew into an adult. I, I just hated who I was and I couldn't get sober and I just didn't like myself. And that's when I got suicidal thoughts and everything. And, and my marriage disintegrated and, and I tried to be a single dad. I screwed that up. I screwed everything up. And then when I ended up in a church one day and I, and I, and I heard about Jesus, you know, I went home. I told the whole story last night, but I, I received Christ in church and I went home and I just prayed. I said, if you're real, come into my life and come and live inside of me and take all this stuff and make me a brand new person. That kid deserves a better father. And, and right then he started to, he started to, it's like he came in and started working on that, 
self-hatred that formed when I was a little boy right away. And it was like, I wanted to live again. And I felt his presence. And I just was like, I felt accepted. I felt, I felt like he was going to really make me brand new, you know? And they say, it's crazy how he does that right away. I could be on meth the day before and the next day his glory touches me. And I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like a new creation, you know? And there's a process, but still he'll give you glimpses of like the, the perfection, the perfection. <laughs> And so he just did that, and, and man, he's just, he's transforming in the last 11 years to a, a person of freedom. I love myself. I love what I look like in the mirror, and I, and I, and I just, I'm, I'm confident. I'm a good dad. I made many mistakes over the years, but like, you know, it's real. And I'm telling you, like, I've always liked like to drink and, and do drugs in my life. And, and the Lord's like, you still can party. Just drink me. <laughs> drink of my spirit. And so I'm still that guy that loves to get just, oh, intoxicated. Now it's by his love and it's real and tangible. And I'm trying to convince anybody I can that it's real, that you can, you can have Jesus and his glory. And that you can, you can just feel that. Oh, wow. It's the most awesome high ever that's why he's called the most high in the bible i'm really getting energized thank you for letting me speak i was like passing out over there earlier but wow oh god if i would have known that i would have saved so much money on drugs and alcohol before like why did it take so long jesus but he touched that self-hatred place you know and that and I, and I know he's still working on stuff and I know that, uh, that's a process and I know there's stuff in there that I don't know is there and, you know, he uncovers it and he works on it in his time. But, you know, I just felt like maybe there's some people here that are struggling with that. And, and you know, we've been, we've, we've hurt ourselves throughout our life. We've been hurt by others. We've made mistakes and hurt others bad. And we carry guilt inside of us. We carry these things that happened to us when we were kids and Christ is in there and we are new creations, but you know, maybe I just felt like I wanted to, to, um, deal with that with, with, with everybody here because I got free from that. And you know, we go from glory to glory, you know? So, um, what's really cool is, uh, Psalm 139. I know it's a lot of your guys' favorite, one of your favorite Psalms because it's so yummy. It's just so good. But I paraphrased it to where, you know, David said, you know, you have searched me and you know me and you know, you know, he, he did it from like talking to God. And I, I paraphrased it and turned it around with like God speaking that to us. So I like to read that to you if that's okay. And then Mary, um, I felt like afterwards that maybe you could pray the blood prayer over. Is that okay with you? Okay. If you want to just come up whenever, um, so if we could just close our eyes, if you guys don't mind, I want to read this Psalms paraphrased over all of us. And it's God speaking to us. I have looked deep into your heart and I know all about you. I know when you are resting and when you are working and from heaven, I discover your thoughts. I notice everything you do and everywhere you go. Before you even speak a word, I know what you will say. And with my powerful arm, I protect you from every side. I know you can't understand all of this. Such wonderful knowledge is far above you. There is nowhere you can go to escape from my spirit or from my sight. If you were to climb up to the highest heavens, I would be there. If you were to dig down to the world of the dead, I would also be there. Suppose you had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then my powerful arm would guide and protect you. Or suppose you said, I'll hide in the dark until night comes to cover me over. But I see in the dark because daylight and dark are all the same to me. I am the one who put you together inside your mother's body. And you are wonderfully made the way I created you. Everything I do is marvelous. Of this you should have no doubt. Nothing about you is hidden from me. 
You were secretly woven together deep in the earth below. But with my own eyes, I saw your body being formed. Even before you were born, I had written in my book everything you would do. Wow. My thoughts are, sorry. My thoughts are far beyond your understanding. Much more than you can ever imagine. If you try to count my thoughts, they would outnumber the grains of sand on the beach. And when you awake, you will find me nearby. And I thank you, Father, that you, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord. And, and if, if, if you do everything marvelous, then we are marvelous, Lord. So I just pray right now that you would go into those places inside of us, Lord, that, that may still be there, Lord. That, that things that we don't like about ourselves and that we go to other things besides you to, to comfort us, to make us feel, feel good. And the things are bad for us, Lord, whether it be whatever, you know, we put things in our body we know is, are not good for us, Lord, whether it be food or, or, or alcohol or, or, you know, too much sugar or coffee, whatever it is, Lord, but you created this temple for, for all goodness, all goodness to come inside, Lord. So whatever we replace and put in front, of you lord i just pray that you would you would touch any wounds inside of all of us lord and as mary pr prays this blood prayer lord that we would be able to receive it and be changed from another from one glory to another level of glory in jesus name amen i want to release something to you so don't run off everybody good this is the amazing time it's amazing day but I'm carrying something I, I saw this morning. It's like a little fire. And when there's a little fire, I know, I know. You know, you just know that you know. You ever just know that you know. And there's something I want to release. And because um, some of you may be from out of town and heading back. But if you would look with me over in First Samuel and uh, just remember the story of David and Goliath. You guys remember that. So I'm just going to share a little bit and impart something, but it's real important. Okay. Hey, let's go over this story. Remember, the Philistines were gathered together with their armies. And then on the other mountain, Saul and the armies of Israel were gathered together. There was a great valley between them. This is 1 Samuel chapter 17. And then it says in verse 4, a, a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines you know what his name was, right? Goliath. Anybody know how big he was? They said like six feet, nine inches tall. But if you look at the armor that he carried and that he wore, he was possibly nine feet, nine inches tall. Doesn't matter. He was big. He was giant. And uh, he was defying the armies of the living God. Do you think that there may be a chance that there are enemies of the church of Jesus that are rising up today in America to defy the armies of the living God. And how did David respond? Well, he responded in a way that I think was pretty admirable. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who would defy the armies of the living God? Remember that? And God's doing something. He's putting something inside of us that's just not going to take no for an answer. He's put it in you. And uh, w there really is going to be a great testimony that's going to be in this nation that greater is he that's in the church than he that's in the world. And it's going to be shouted, but it's going to be more than shouted. It's going to be demonstrated. And then David, he asked this question because, you know, they thought he was too young. You know, whatever he, all he did, he just tended a few sheep. He seemed pretty insignificant. And they were, you know, talking about him. But then he asked a question. You remember the question he asked? Is there not, remember? Do you remember? Can you read? Is there not a cause? Remember that? Is there not a cause? David was saying, man, is there not some purpose that I've been placed on the earth for this hour? Is there something not greater and larger than me that I can give myself to? And I'm telling you, there is something right now God's planning in us to get us ready for the hour. Now, I was preaching in, uh, you know this place, Dylan, Tyler, Manchester United, Manchester, England. Yeah, I was preaching in Manchester, England a number of years ago. And, 
And uh, it was a youth meeting, and they rented a, a big room at the university, and they told me, now, halfway during this session, you're going to hear a lot of rumbling going on outside because Manchester United's getting ready to play soccer, and there's going to be a riot outside. I thought, oh, a riot. I get to see a football ri- riot. That's pretty cool. I thought that was going to be needed. But they said, don't go on the street. So I didn't go on the street. But I looked out the window, and I saw, man, these guys were radical. Adv- I mean, these guys were, you talk about devoted football fans, soccer fans. I mean, they were, they were ready to rumble. And I guess Manchester United's a big soccer team. I don't know much about that sport. The best team in the world. Well, no wonder they were rowdy. Most popular team. Well, these guys were rowdy. Just, it was a little riot. The police let them go by and stuff. But, you know, I remember I was thinking, those, ha- those guys, those people, girls too, they have a cause. They've got a purpose. There's something motivating them that's causing them to act this way. And I'm telling you, there's something God is rising, putting inside of us. And it's a big cause. Say it's a big cause. You don't know. I'm telling you, it is much later than we think. The time is much more important than what we give it credit for. You're much more important. You, where you're living is so vital right now. Your neighborhood. You know, we, we sometimes think maybe just nonchalantly, I'm here by accident. You're not anywhere by accident. If you are led by the Spirit of God, right? You know, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. And uh, it's time that we get connected with our calls. Say, my calls, my purpose. And that's what I want to release. Now, you know, there are a lot of young people looking for their purpose. They're, well, I can't find it. I was that way at time. Where is my cause? Where is my purpose? What am I here for? You ever been there? I'm not so sure you find it as to maybe it finds you. Because it just kind of happens. The Bible says, somewhere in Proverbs, that your gift will make room for itself. I mean, if you know that. And set you before great men. So God does it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Tyler, I remember the very day I was standing on Lake, not on Lake Pontchartrain, and that'd be neat, but actually, (laughs) that's good. That's next. That's coming. I'll meet you down there. We'll go try it out, man. But I was standing on the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, and the Lord challenged me. He said, if you will do Matthew 6, 33, if you will do your part, I will do my part. Of course, I knew what Matthew 6.33 said, but I looked it up anyway. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added unto you. And so, you know what I'm finding? God is faithful. God is faithful. He knows how to get you in the right place at the right time. The hard part is just laying down your life. That's the hard part. He'll tell you what to do and lead you in open doors. It's an incredible time. But I was preaching that day out of Psalm 78. Now, just for the sake of time, I won't read out of that. You can do it later, but you should say, I'm going to read Psalm 78. I'm going to read it. No, no, say it again. I didn't hear you. I will read Psalm 78. And he's talking about in there, and this was what I was preaching on that day, how one generation is to declare to another generation, you know, to your children, the greatness of your God and and all that He is. And then that generation is to be challenged and it it lists in there to arise and declare them to your generation. Set your hope in God. Don't forget your God. Keep His commands. Set your heart straight, straight or right and be faithful. And I remember, you know, challenging. I'm telling you, there's a generation rising up and they may not look like everybody we know. That's okay, isn't it? We don't care. God looks at the heart. But there's a radical generation arising. Now, you know, your life, my life, we're either going to try to fulfill other people's purposes for us. You ever had anybody, you know, put put a purpose on you? You're made to do this. Or this is your, you know, it's like a yoke. You got to break that stuff off. Because you're not here to please what someone else said is going to make them happy. 
And then you can't, you can't even fulfill your own purpose. Or you try to do it. Or you can be in the earth to fulfill the devil's purposes. There are people doing that right now. They are of their father, the devil. Now you say you shouldn't talk that way. Jesus talked that way. Remember? He said you're of your father, the devil. So anyway, all that stuff's going on. But then there's God's eternal purpose. Say God's eternal purpose. And that's what God wants to give us. There's something he wants to activate in this room and those watching by the web stream and, uh, th today or whenever you would watch it. There's something he wants to kick into gear. Is that okay? If we let him do it. There's something he wants to, uh, it's like I see a, he wants to light the fuse inside of you to make you go off. I mean, really go off. Because I have a feeling where we've been from where we began to where we are is not even touch where God wants us to go. The church in America has retreated on many fronts. But the church this day in America will advance on every front. Because that's what the kingdom of God does. The kingdom is advancing. How I many of you, it's advancing. The peace of God and the kingdom of God. Now, here's what I want to look at. Because if you want to get your cause, you should find somebody in the Bible that found their cause and then act like them. Is that a good plan? You know, you are to, I mean, you, it's okay to have heroes, you know, as long as that hero follows the Lord. Then when he stops following the Lord, off, be gone, you are no longer my hero. You know what I'm talking about? Because we are to follow those as far as they Follow the Lord. But so the example I want to use is John the Baptist. You can go ahead and turn with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 1. And, and this is, I want to share some things about old John. Now, I don't know if he was a real Baptist or not. That's what they say. He could have been a Methodist. Could have been John the Presbyterian. John, I don't know what he could have been, but he could have been something else. You know, I don't even think he was a Baptist. Because there were no Baptists. Where'd all that stuff come from anyway? There were no Methodists. There were no Presbyterians. There were no Lutherans. There was one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I mean, that's the way it was. What happened? You know what happened? One guy got up and said something somebody else didn't agree with. And said, I don't agree with you. I'm going to go over here and start my thing. And then that guy got up and said something. And somebody in the congregation said, well, I don't agree with that. I'm going to go over here and... Anyway, we have all kinds of stuff happening. In the end, you know what it's going to look like? One body. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. That's it. I'm not David the Methodist or David whatever. Now, you remember John. John was the guy that he didn't really take a lot of credit himself. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He's always pointing. He was the forerunner. Remember that. Remember, he said that he might increase that I might, what? Decrease. A lot of people get that twisted. They say that I might decrease that he would increase. Impossible. I dare you. Try it. Try to, in, try to decrease without him being on the increase first. It ain't going to happen. You are fighting a losing battle. You can't decrease unless you let him increase first. It's first yes to him and then you can you can decrease. It'll happen when he shows up. In fact, he's going to start showing up, and there's going to be a lot of decreasing in this hour. A whole bunch of stuff. All right, now look at Luke chapter 1. And uh, you remember uh, the Zacharias gets his prophecy about, he, you know, in Elizabeth. It says in verse 7, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. Now, you know that in that day to be barren, you know, was not necessarily a blessing. And then it said that they were both well advanced in years. That's what the New King James says. Now, that's the polite way to say they were both old people. You know, that's a much better way to say it, whoever, you know, the translators. They were well advanced in years. I hope people remember that when I get there. You know, that guy's just well advanced in years. Who you calling old? I don't like, you know, I'm not going to have that stuff, man. It's like when, when I was younger, they would call their dads, some of the guys, 
my old man. I just did not like it. I don't know. It's just something grieved. My dad was not an old man. You know, anybody like that? I didn't like it. I loved my dad. He was my hero. Now, he, now that he's gone and I know what he did, I saw his life. He was definitely my hero. But look, look in verse 8. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of the division. Now, you young people, listen, look at this. It's crazy. In the order of the division, according to the custom of the priesthood. You know, there's some folks say to have the Holy Spirit, you got to do away with all that tradition and all that order. Let me tell you. When the Holy Spirit shows up, I don't care if you are in order or out of order, the order of heaven takes root. God moves where there's hunger. I don't care if there's tradition or custom or what. When God shows up, everything changes. So they're in this order, they're in custom. And then he said, this lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Anybody ever done that before, cast a lot before God? Say, okay, God, if this is you, cause this to happen. Anybody? I've done that. I did that. When I moved to Waco, Texas, I said, God, if this is you, do these three things. And guess what? He did those three things. Now, there are other times it didn't work. I mean, it's kind of like you're saying, okay, God. Because one time I said, God, if this is you, cause a star to fly across the sky. And nothing happened. So I closed my eyes. I said, okay, God, you get another chance. If this is you, cause a star. And I looked up, nothing happened. That'd be like saying, you know, some things you just know to do. Okay, God, I'll go talk to my neighbor about Jesus if when I wake up in the morning, the sky is purple. (laughs) Forget it. That's stupid. That is stupid. You don't need to tempt the Lord. Just obey the Holy Spirit. So anyway, let's go on. I'm going to get through this because i got to get these uh, couple of points in. There's about six of them or so. It won't take long. Then we want to pray. Can we do some more prayer? You got any more of that in you? You got any more of the Holy Spirit inside of you? Just... (laughs) How can you have the Holy Spirit inside of you with all that long hair like that? Man, what's wrong? What kind of Holy Spirit is this? He must be the real Holy Spirit. He must look at the heart and not the outward appearance. This is a good... But no, you are a good-looking 46-year-old man. You're 46. I thought you were still in your 20s. It's cool, man. You know... But anyway, okay, so look, and the whole multitude of the people were praying at the hour of incense. There's another. They had that set hour. But look what happens at the set hour. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and shows up. And he said, you shall call his name John. And then he goes on in verse 15, talking about John. He'll be great in the sight of the Lord, shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go also before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And then Zechariah said in verse 18 to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. Now, he was a smart guy. He confessed he was old, but he said his wife was well advanced in years. (laughs) And then he goes on and you know what happened. And then John the Baptist. So, all right, talk about John the Baptist. He had a cause. He had a purpose. The first thing we notice about him, he was named by his heavenly father. I'm telling you, you have a name that no one else knows. And in Revelation, God will give you that name. He'll reveal that to you. I have no doubt my dad named me David. It was supposed to be. I have no doubt my son was to be called Joshua because way before Shirley ever thought about appearing, I was praying for Joshua. How many of you, you know what I'm talking about? God gave me, I was praying for my son prophesying Of course, I was arguing a little bit too. I was saying, God, how am I going to have a Joshua if I don't even have a missus? You got to do your part. And he did do his part. It happened. But I'm telling you, he read from Psalm 139. Before you were formed, I knew you. I knew all about you. Your days were fashioned, written in a book. And you just got to walk it out. And then something else that said he would be great in the sight of the Lord. Great in the sight of the Lord. You know, you're not always going to be great in the sight of people. In fact, if you follow the Lord, you're probably going to be 
not as great in the sight of people as you would like to be. Because let me tell you, if they hated him, they're not going to think that highly of you. You know, most of the world, a lot of the religious, especially the religious folks, and they may call you all kinds of names. Have you ever been called a name? You know, don't tell me what you've been called. I don't want to hear it. But that's a good, somebody told me one time, if, if the devil doesn't say something bad about somebody, then God's probably not saying anything good about them. So I listen with, whenever I hear religious folks talk about somebody, my ears perk up and I say, God, there must be something mighty good about that guy. Must, you must be on him. I mean, the hand of God must be on that person. There were two things that were imprinted in my mind when I was a young boy. One was, let God be true and every man a liar. And I've never forgotten. Now there's a lot of scriptures, but that one is just like big time. Not that every man is a liar, but if what man says disagrees with what God said about me or my purpose or what's going on in the earth, that man or that woman is a liar. Amen? Let God be true. And another thing is, if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can be? Who cares who's against you? If God's for you, you got, you got all at your disposal, I'm telling you. You know, when it's all said and done, you won't stand before the crowd. You know that. You're not going to stand before some man or woman. You're not even going to stand before a mirror. That's probably a good thing for some of us because most of us have bad hair days every day. You know what I mean? You're looking, oh, have mercy, God. You know, I was thinking... You know, if you just gave me one lock, about right about that much, I could fill in some of these gaps, man. I, could, I thought, you know, maybe I could. We're supposed to share the wealth, you know what I mean? And I could, I could have a good time. Lava to come off in the middle of the... And that'd be really embarrassing, you know. I'd, anyway, we won't go there. I'd, I, thought, I think about that sometime. I, that'd be really... You talk about embarrassing for somebody. But anyway... Let me just say this. Be determined that you're going to be great in the sight of the Lord. Who cares? God, let me be great in your sight. God, I want to be pleasing in your sight. Lord, when you look at me, I want a big smile on your face. In fact, that's happening more than you know. It truly is. And then the next thing, it says he was set apart for the Lord, he shall neither drink wine nor strong drink. Now, this is that Nazarite vow. He was consecrated. He was separated unto the Lord. And we won't spend a lot of time, but remember Romans 12, 1. Do not be conformed to this world. You told me you've been in that scripture for a long time. Three months. That's good. That's like when David Hogan. I bet when he comes again in August, he's going to be preaching out of Hebrews. You know, that scripture. Faith is... You watch. He'll be in the same text when he comes in March as he's been here before. But but don't be conformed to the world. You know what it means, right? Have you learned that yet? It means don't let the world squeeze you into making you look like the world wants you to look like. I'm going to look like him, like him. And then the next thing, he was filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. You need, I'm telling you, we need fresh in fillings of the Holy Spirit. We need the fresh wind of God. I told you last week how we were in Alabama prophesying to the wind, and then we heard about the, the windstorm you guys had the next day, and I'm sorry that it was a little bit destructive. We had this whole event change because of that wind. But God's, our plan B was God's plan A, right? Shalom. So it was still good. It was good that it was here. But I'm telling you, somebody told me this week, I got to check it out. I did, I haven't checked this out first, but it sounded good and he's my friend. And if he didn't check it out, I'm going to get him. But he said in, in Genesis where it says that the Holy Spirit, or God came after them. You remember they were hiding, they sinned, and the, God came in the cool of the day. Remember that? He said the word cool, somebody look it up. If he's telling me a story, I'm going to get him. But he said, it's the word wind. The wind, God came in the wind of the day. Even if it's not Hebrew, I'm telling you, it's good stuff because that's what we need. We need God to come in the wind of the day. There's a wind appointed for this day, and it's blowing. It's blowing. I'm telling you, it's already blowing. Stick your finger up. Do do that. 
Can you feel it? If you can't, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's blowing. It's blowing. There's a mighty rushing wind blowing. I was... I liked hurricanes, man, growing up in Louisiana. I loved them. My dad and mom didn't care much for them, but I loved them. And uh, me and my brother, we'd go outside and try to throw football, and whoosh, the football, they would have a lot of fun, man. It was, it was cool. But then they, there came the cleanup after, and it wasn't quite as fun. You had to do a lot of stuff, pick up trees. You know, well, I didn't pick up any trees, but I did, I did help limbs, you know. I picked up limbs, but it had been good to pick up trees. The next thing, he will turn many of the children of Israel back to the Lord, their God. I'm telling you, there are lots of people about to, you know, the the church needs to turn back to him first. Bob, what did Bob used to say, Bob Jones? He's in that great cloud of witnesses that's in this church. There's a big balcony here. I'm telling you. It's a big cloud of witnesses. I don't know if Bob, they think he comes down in Fort Mill. I think he's here. Because he's buried out there. He didn't have as far to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I don't know if that's the way. That's not the way that works. And he's not buried anyway. It's just his bones. But anyway, Bob used to say, the born again need to get born again. I used to hear that, Bob, what in the world do you mean? Most of what Bob said, I would say, Bob, what in the world do you mean? But I believe the born again need to get born again. We need fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh unction, unction to function. You try to function in this hour with all of hell that's rising up, you are in a big time trouble. You're in a mess. But if you have the unction, you will do things you never thought were possible. We're going to pray in a little bit for the fresh wind to come upon the people, okay? And then we're going to pray around the altar. But there are a lot of people about also to turn to the Lord in the world. That's what we're getting equipped for. That's what we're getting ready for. That's why we got to kick off that big cause, that big purpose that's inside of you. Because a lot of people are about to come to Jesus. And we've got to be in place. We've got to be ready, set, go. Because they're not coming to us, but God uses us to point them to him. And then there's a whole lot of scriptures about that. And then the next thing it says, he will go before him, the Lord, in the spirit and power of Elijah. Say Elijah. Now you remember Elijah was a man, it says in James, he was a man just like us. Just like us. But he prayed that it wouldn't rain. And remember, the rain stopped. And then after three months plus, he prayed that it would rain And the heavens opened up and a big flood came. And uh, now prayer, you know, he was praying and power, they go together. You guys need to catch that. Uh, um, Brian was talking about praying in the spirit. Man, I'm telling you, there's something to, I've been over the last, I don't know, year and a half. I've always prayed in the spirit, but the Lord said, crank it up, crank it up. So I pray in the spirit, driving all the time. I just pray in the spirit. I bet you, if you pass me one day, you're going to think, man, that guy, what's he doing? Mouthing. I don't always mouth, but sometimes you pray in the spirit, in the spirit. You can just, you know, I told you this story, man. This is cool. Before I believed in praying in the spirit, I thought it was of the devil. I didn't know. And uh, I went to this thing at Wheaton College. I've shared, shared this story, but you hadn't heard it. So anyway, it was a Wheaton College, and it was a, I don't know, some kind of pastor's thing. And I was rooming with a Church of Christ guy, a pastor from a Church of Christ. And um, he was definitely Church of Christ. This guy, anyway, we woke up in the morning, and he said, David, I did not know you spoke in tongues. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What are you talking about? He said, man, you spoke in tongues all night long. I could not sleep. I kept getting up. You were speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. I said, really? Really? That was it. That's, that was it. I said, really? Praying in tongues all night? We need to kick that off again, guys. We need, we need to crank that thing up, man. Because I was dreaming about 
Who knows? But I don't know. I can't remember. But I'm telling you, we need to kick that thing off again. How many would you like God to do something? You have not because you ask not. We're to pray continually. Why don't we just ask God to do that right now? If you want that, just raise your hand. Lord, and that you, only you can do this, God. But I'm willing to be foolish. So, Lord, we just pray. God, would you activate that prayer language in an amazing, supernatural way? God, we ask you, we give you permission to pray through us, Holy Spirit, even when we are asleep. In the name of Jesus, God, some of us struggle to pray for hours. If we pray through the night, man, that's a bunch of hours. So we pray, God, let it be cranked up. Let it be released. Release. We release you. We yield to you, Holy Spirit, to pray through us the perfect will of God. And we thank you. Whatever we pray will be done. So we release it now. That fire, that, that switch, by faith, I turn it on. I see a red switch. So I'm just turning on that red switch. That's like a fire alarm there, okay? And that intercession would arise in the saints of the Most High God. And we thank you for it. Now, Lord, do it and have people, have our wives or husbands or dogs or somebody confirm. Because we won't know. We won't know. Okay, so let's just believe God, see what he does. So Elijah, you know, he called a generation. He said, you know, that to their fathers, to the children, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. How many of you know, that's the way the Old Testament ends. How many of you know that's pretty serious? So we get to be a part of a generation that somehow breaks the curse, reverses the curse. And then he turned the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The Amplified Version says he will turn the disobedient, the incredulous, the unpersuadable to the wisdom of the upright, which is the knowledge and holy love of the will of God. I like the Amplified Version, don't you? There are many right now in our nation that are unpersuadable. They're about to be persuaded. Now, we won't spend a lot of time there, but you know there were more prophecies that came out of the Azusa Street Revival than what we often give credit for. Do you know that? There was one little black lady. She was, what, a cleaning lady. Very simple lady. She had an encounter with God. She, that prophecy is also published about a great trouble coming to America. But it was because of God's love for America. It would persuade the unpersuadable. It would turn the unturnable. It would reach the unreachable. Because many would reach up to the Lord their God. That's what he's getting us ready for, guys. Getting us ready. We're going to have a word for the weary and well season. In the season. Okay? So we're getting all ready for it. You know, there's some, isn't it interesting how some prophecies nobody likes to talk about? Others, man, I want to prophesy this one. Everybody's going to get rich. We prophesy. One million dollars falling in your lap this day. Are you taking that serious? Let it be according to your faith. You know, I mean, that's all right. You got to be careful what you say. That prayer mountain up there, Bob said, be careful what you pray when you go up there. I think about that every time I go up there. I'm not going to just... You know, pray some flippant thing. God, this could be serious. So anyway, you know where Prayer Mountain is. You've been there? It's pretty cool. Make, a, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Prepared for the Lord. Prepare the way. Can you believe that's part of our cause? To prepare the way for the Lord? To prepare the way? That's a pretty big cause. Pretty big purpose. This is a pretty big hour in which we live. You guys know that, right? It's a pretty important season of history. So that means if you're on the earth, you must be pretty important in the eyes of God. Must be pretty special. I think you are. A royal priesthood, holy nation, his own special people. Called out of darkness into light. This is it. This is a good time to be alive. Good time to be a young person. And those who are well advanced in years, it's a good time to be well advanced in years. 
It's just a good time. Hey, I don't care if you're well advanced or you're just, you know, just breaking out. Let's stand up. I want to pray. This is serious. I, I don't mean to be funny. I really, I don't try to be, I don't care about that. I'm serious. If you could see the fire, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. This is not a time. I mean, we're going to have fun, but you're going to have fun while a lot of things are being thrown at you. But, you know, just get ready to duck. You know, just duck. Just get your ducking gear on. Get, just get ready. Just duck and go on. Go on. The righteous stumble seven times, but they rise again. And you are the righteous, not because of your righteousness, but because of his. His righteousness. His wisdom. His strength. His mercy. His love. It is all about him. But I want to pray for the wind, okay? We need the wind to come in, in the wind of the day. I'll look it up later. Did that word cool really mean in the Hebrew wind? Yeah. I'll look it up. Does it? He told me the truth. That's cool. I'm going to tell him. Really? Oh, that's great. See, the, sometimes the King James doesn't give you the best translation. You've got to go back. So that's good. The wind of the day. That means the wind of this day. The wind for this day. Okay? So, Lord, we just... God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we ask you, get your, get your sails up. We just extend your hand just to receive. Lord, we receive. We pray for the fresh wind. The wind for this day. The wind of the day. The wind of heaven. And God, right now, Lord, I ask you to activate. I ask you to stir up. I ask you to come and click that switch that will ignite purpose and the cause. There's a big cause in this hour. There is a cause. And it's heaven's cause. Lord, I ask you to give it to your people right now. Give it to every man, every woman, every child, young and old, Lord. Lord, thank you. Lord, stir up the fire of God, fresh purpose, fresh vision. In the name of Jesus, right now, I rip the blindfold off of keeping people from seeing what they need to see for the next season. And, and I just, if I could lay hands, it's like Elijah laid his hands on his servants. God, open his eyes to see the host about them. It's greater than those who are against them. Open their eyes to see the armies of the living God. They encamped around the saints. In the name of Jesus. I just release, Lord, thank you. Fresh wind. Fresh wind. Fresh anointing. There's some that have been waiting for breakthroughs. Oh, God. Lord, we didn't come just to, just to show up. God, would you break through right now? Very difficult and hard things going on in lives right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare absolutely nothing is impossible. We believe you, God, for the possible. And we declare, we reach into that and we just pull that thing down now. We pull it down. We break the stronghold of the evil one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, there's some loved ones that are yet to come into the kingdom. You guys know any loved ones? Let's pray for them. Father, we pray for our loved ones. Enough is enough. They've spent enough time in this world doing the will of the world, the will of Gentiles. We call them in to the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray their eyes will be opened, the blindfold lifted, and that God, the conviction, no man can come to you unless you draw them. And we pray for the drawing power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray that our children, that these, our loved ones, would be part of this great harvest. You are the Lord of the harvest. And we declare the harvest is not four months from now. The harvest is now. And we loose it. 
We loose it in our nation. And we pray those that have previously been unreached, now is your hour of salvation. We declare that in the name of Jesus. And we call you out of darkness into the marvelous light.